She, of course, is trying to turn the tide after losses in Indiana and West Virginia. And with three weeks to go until California, that, by the way, the big kahuna when it comes to delegates, Hillary Clinton would probably really like to wrap this up as quickly as possible so she can focus on the general election. But the presumptive GOP nominee, Donald Trump, trying to throw a wrench into that plan this morning, tweeting, quote, Bernie Sanders is being treated very badly by the Dems. The system is rigged against him. He should run as an independent. Run, Bernie, run. I'm joined now by former Democratic governor from California, Gray Davis, and former Republican governor and senator from Virginia, George Allen. Welcome to you both again. Uh, governor Davis, you're a Hillary supporter, but what are the chances that Donald Trump can kind of stir the pot a bit and get Bernie fans to, I guess in a way, turn their backs on Hillary Clinton, even if she nabs the nomination? Uh, well, one thing Bernie and Hillary agree on 100% Liz, is they cannot stand the prospect of a Trump presidency. And so uh, Hillary, I'm very proud of her. She's been very respectful of Bernie and his followers because she, after all, campaigned till the end of the primary season back in 2008. But I am confident she will be the nominee. She's farther ahead now than Obama was back in 2008. Uh, and I'm confident that Bernie Sanders, President uh, Obama, Michelle, Bill Clinton, and Vice President Biden will all be out there with Bernie Sanders as strong surrogates for Hillary in the general election. All right. So, Governor Davis, I, I want your opinion on that. But before that, I, I need to know why you have yet to endorse Donald Trump. You, as a Republican, have not yet come out, and yet he is the presumptive nominee. Will you support Donald Trump? You're, you're talking to me, yes. uh, Allen. Yes, I'm sorry, <laughs> and, Governor Allen, yes. Right. Well, uh, d as you know, uh, on your show, I endorsed Marco Rubio right. months and months ago. Correct. And uh, I think the way I look at it now is that you have a choice between an authentic socialist, an untrustworthy liberal, and a successful businessman. And so the choice for me uh, out of that is I'd, I'd prefer the trustful businessman <laughs> on at least economic issues. I have a lot of reservations with a lot of Donald Trump's statements on some issues, but I think on the economy, uh, if he will come forward with coherent, positive ideas to make our country more competitive for investment and jobs and energy policies and reining in the regulations and so forth, uh, it's an easy choice to be for a successful businessman rather than you know, a socialist just, or, or, or a liberal. Sure. I, I just heard you say a big if there. It almost sounds like you're with perhaps Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, who hasn't yet given that sort of full-throated endorsement. Uh, no, look, I'm, it's, I'm, it's about I'm, negotiation, Liz, isn't it, and compromise? Well, well uh, I, the reason I like Paul Ryan, I think he has great potential. Potential means you haven't done something yet, but I think Paul Ryan uh, has the potential to be a great leader because I think he's motivated mostly by ideas and reforms, and that's what the American people want to see. They, they're in a mood of throw the bums out, and uh, Donald Trump is obviously not one of those of the establishment. Neither is Bernie Sanders, for that matter. I, I, as far as voting, mm -hmm. elections are about choices. Okay. And while there's no Ronald Reagan in this election, it is about choices. And I think a successful businessman is, is better than the other choices. And Governor Davis, uh, look, if the choice is Hillary Clinton, what does she need to do to sweep up those supporters of Bernie? She's not going to make him vice president. I, I would presume you're going to say that. However, does she bring in a vice president who's very progressive and, and reflects what Bernie Sanders has done and, and believes, certainly to grab some of that, that zeitgeist that he's been so, so confident and, and successful at grabbing? Well, she, she needs to continue, Liz, to show respect to Bernie Sanders. I'm sure he's exceeded his expectations. He's excited his yeah, followers. And she's going to need him to campaign wholeheartedly for her in the general election. And I believe in my heart and take Bernie at his word that he will do that because he can't stand the thought of a, of a Trump presidency. So um, I think Hillary needs to continue to w work on uh, calling for rising incomes, closing the income gap. Uh, breaking down some of the barriers that keep people from reaching their full potential, and then benefit from all these surrogates going out and making the case with her. I, I need to just quickly get this in. Uh, Governor Allen, uh, talking about the issues, this weekend Donald Trump was asked about 
whether he might meddle in the, the British exit of the European Union. He did not go where, where President Obama had, and, and President Obama got some criticism for, quote, sticking his nose in, according to, uh, you know, the former mayor of London, Boris. You know, he, he didn't like that. But w what do you think? Is this the way that Donald Trump will govern, sort of more protectionist, more, I, I dare say, isolationist? I'm not sure that's really fair. I don't know if Donald Trump would go that way. But he did not want to get into whether he felt the U.K. should exit from the European Union, which is a big economic issue and matters to our business viewers. Well, it matters mostly to the people of Great Britain. They can make their own decisions. Being a Jeffersonian conservative from Virginia, uh, we wanted our independence from the British monarchy. <laughs> and the people of Britain can make their own decisions for themselves without the United States telling them how to control their own destiny, just as we didn't want them telling us how to run our lives. One thing I want to say on this election in the Democrat primaries, particularly in Appalachian, and obviously Kentucky's part of that, as is Virginia and West Virginia, Pennsylvania and Ohio, the third or more of the votes in the Democratic primary said they're going to vote for Trump. So I think Donald Trump has a, an ability uh, to make sure Americans, as far as energy producing states, mm -hmm look at our energy resources as a blessing as opposed to a curse and that's a big big issue for manufacturing competitiveness or the affordability of electricity and american national security not being gotcha. uh, worried about the whims of other countries as far as the cost of oil or natural gas or or coal great to see you both thank you so much great being with you all I, I know you want to get it we, we've got to run but we will absolutely have you back you guys have been a mainstay okay. during our election coverage governor gray davis governor george allen